A landscape with birch trees, 48 inches by 50 inches. Um, we're looking at my new canvas, and uh, this is the stage that it's at. Uh, I'm working in a in a a bedroom in a, like a small room in a farmhouse, and uh, I I put up a light, and uh, this canvas I think is almost the biggest size I can paint in this room, and uh, I'm uh, I'm visiting as a as a volunteer and as an artist in residence on the farm here. Yeah, good. Um, so let's see. Uh, there's a thumbnail sketch of the image that I'm going to be starting today. Uh, these are trees and there's a tree in the foreground and then there's smaller trees further back. Yeah. It's pretty helpful to to do uh, some planning and some sketching beforehand. So this is not um I'm I'm familiar with the subject that I am going to be working on. Uh, in fact, I I've been painting, of, you know, for many years, and I've painted many, many landscapes with different kinds of trees and scenes in them. And uh, for this project, I am wanting to to have a picture of birch trees and um, expressive, stylized kind of painting. I'm getting my paints ready, getting set up for starting, and uh, I have black, yellow, and white out, and that will give me a range of colors uh, within greens, gray, and like fairly light yellowy greens. And I have a spray bottle nearby to keep spraying the palette with water so that it stays wet and workable. I guess the I I thought oh, let's let's add a bit of blue to this to have more um, range for greens and uh, I'm using a, a palette knife and I am starting to set up a background in a broad general kind of paint painting approach so I'm buttering paint onto the canvas, spreading the paint so that there are not too many thick um, piles or bubbles of it, so that the layer is fairly even and fairly lean. And this is where I am setting up lighter and darker areas and I'm mixing it's just very variations of lighter and darker gray greens I I love how uh, moving the paint and together with the palette knife produces this grainy 
and um, like paint early an expressive color field, color surface. Mm. And there are some colors mixing simultaneously. I often don't mix the color too well so that there are st still streaks of black appearing in the brush strokes or in the palette knife strokes. Um, when, when most of the surface is has got some paint on it. I am starting to kind of connect everything and take out a white canvas showing through for um, consistency so so that I don't have a little white highlights popping out in the areas that I don't want them to be. And this is the part of the painting where it's uh, the least possible to mess anything up. It's uh, because the goal of this stage is to mess, mess the canvas up with paint. When I am uh, working on on this uh, layer, I am thinking, uh, what colors do I like? Uh, how do I like a bluish and colder green next to the warmer, more yellowy green? How do I like them to be side by side? How can I have... Um, uniformed kind of surface that flows visually well and what does that mean to me so i get to think about oh i like the balance between the dark and the lighter strokes and i want to connect them with neutral grays and i want some and I want white in some areas to blend with other colors to have these painterly smears and that uh, those smears are unique to broader painting tool tools so a brush would not be able to do to set up a surface like this or maybe, but not quite. Now I have this um, painted first coat on my canvas and uh, I'm liking the purples and there is um, a lot lighter area at the top that I need for where the sky or where any light is coming from is from the top area within the painting and now I am figuring out and measuring and thinking uh, how to fit the objects within the rectangle I have a thumbnail sketch and uh, it's like it serves as a plan as a note as a map so i'm reading the map that i already have and i am improving on it but i'm also using the successful balance of the composition that that i liked so i determined where the center of the canvas is on all of the sides of the canvas and I see where the middle of it is and I am uh, fitting the large tree the major object in the foreground off center to the left 
and it is on a diagonal. So with this, with the drawing, I'm using black and uh, a thinner brush, and I'm simply drawing out the tree. And this is gonna give me a pretty good idea where to to go when I'm going to add color and shadow and texture and other uh, elements to this area. Within the drawing, it is possible to embed the complexity of the object. It's object's unique visual identity, form. So this is where I am able to, if I start out, if I start simple, let's say, and I make a stubby kind of straight tree, and I would think, oh, this needs more movement and more expressiveness. Then I can correct it and reshape it at this stage. And this stage is going to be completely covered with next layers of paint. So this is for, this is for me. I am drawing these trees for myself to know how I'm going to make them and to have um personal connection like you know I end up I end up having the quite personal connection to the painting and to the process and so you know I'm like portraying um creating these birch trees in my mind and then I'm drawing them and I already have a plan I already invested energy and discovered some stylistic and fun ways of drawing and painting these trees we are seeing my uh like underpainting process in this in these videos or in even in this video and uh and this it kind of gives you uh an, the anatomy of what actually went on so Oh, I am drawing objects, vertical, elongated shapes to represent trees. I am giving each object a unique shape, a unique angle, and a unique amount of detail. I am paying attention to the relationship between the objects so that they are positioned in a dynamic, graceful kind of way on the canvas. Let's start applying next step. And this is a dark, dark gray variations of mid-tone to dark gray and I am starting to apply broad general major areas where the meat where the body or you know where these objects are visible what kind of look do they have what kind of skin bark do those objects have I am taking taking some gray paint on the edge of a palette knife and then I am starting a palette knife stroke and then I'm kind of curving curving around the tree trunk to enhance to increase the um, illusion of three-dimensional object a cylinder so I'm kind of painting around, around the cylinder. 
and that's giving me uh, effective initial um, kind of resolution that a lot of this could doesn't need to be repainted. It uh, I initially crafted crafted so that it could represent the surface that I'm trying to show some kind of starting and then I'm moving around 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 the tree and I'm looking for uh, for brush strokes or for palette knife strokes that are diverse in appearance that don't look too cartoony too repetitive um, so you know I'm looking for satisfying rich expressive Mm, surprising kind of pushing the pushing m even my own expectation a little bit over the limit or you know just letting the paint strokes tell me whether they're beautiful or not I'm l learning from my process And here, my my aim is to create three dimensional uh, impression for these trees or for these objects. There will need to be a lighter side, a darker area, and there's also a reflected light opposite of the light side and that's what i'm doing right now i am building up a little bit of a lighter area it's not white it's lighter gray and that kind of rounds the tree or the object because it curves in the distance and it get some light on the opposite side of light as well it's called reflected light and uh, i've done this process for all of the objects so that overall everything has got three-dimensional form an illusion of 3d form And here is um, the white. Is it white or no? It's actually um, dark, uh, lighter gray. I still didn't get to pure white. The video is. Uh, it's not always possible to show the variance, but it's quite light, and we will see later. It'll get even lighter with highlights, extreme highlights that I might be using pure white for. So this lighter gray appears on the light side, on the right in this case of the objects. And this does not travel around. It's a little too light, too bright for being in the shadow. Now we can see the quality that's been produced by just running this exercise, just doing this process. So I am liking the roughness of everything, that uh, nothing is still, still too detailed and it, there's still lots of room for improvement and next stages will be following.